Hey everybody, welcome back to the pull box pals. It seems like it's been a lot longer than it has. Um oh my god, I'm, it does. It feels like it's been like three weeks, but it's only been well, I mean it's been two weeks since we last went live, but we skipped last week and it's just been a long couple of days <laughs> in, in that buddy. time frame for me. So um but yeah, welcome back everybody. Uh Tim and I are excited to be here. Sorry, monk. I keep giving away your secret identity. That's yeah. totally fine. <laughs> um, and we were just chatting before we got on because it has been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, we'll just be a little up front here, but we're we're a little behind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've been pulling a lot of comics and trying. To, I'm Monk and that's Mark, by the way. Uh, but uh, right. yeah, we've been we've been trying to. There's been. I, I always feel, I mean, I feel like I say this every week, but there's just so many comics, you know? Yeah. No, I think and I quoted just, you that I'm behind about 25 comics, which I'm usually like, I'm usually like current on like my last poll list, but I still have comics from three poll weeks ago that I have yet to read. Yeah. Actually, and, I think even a, a month ago, now that I think about it. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about uh, the ward. I was, was talking about the ward and I'd like, it's just been sitting on my like, to read a pile for it would seems like since kingdom come like like i guess it's kingdom come is something to come but since like the dawn of the universe it's just been sitting there waiting me for, to read it and i finally got to it today and uh, yeah. i don't know if i'm going to be talking about it at all outside of mentioning that i read it right yeah there. well we'll see you know this is we're gonna have a lot of banter today oh, um cool. but before we get into our polls for this week so we can get back on track with how we normally do things just want to give a shout out to the iwep network for hosting us on this platform uh, yeah you can go to their website check out all the other podcasts they got going on they got tornado tag there's not cool in high school um man uh, that then that's the movie one which i've i've been following a little bit more closely lately and i've really been yeah. enjoying it and it's just like man I'd, I'd actually love to be on some of those episodes to talk about the movies or shows that they bring up so i bet you could we yeah. i we know a guy we know a guy well uh, you you know a guy and i i i know him as a, an acquaintance and i hope to to remedy that yeah one day uh who who knows? I'm sure there's going to be some sort of crossover, but but no spoilers. No, spoilers. but um, I don't know, Mark. I'm trying to think of like some fun question to ask you, but like you've just been camping so much this summer. How much is how did you been enjoying camping? You over oh, yeah. camping? Uh, it's hard to ever really be over camping because it's just such an easy thing to do where I'm at. Mm. Um, it's just it's it's hard getting over that like summer camping is over. And uh, yeah, and and Kate and I just had a lot of fun camping this summer. We were talking about it last night, like what our favorite ones were and like what we liked about each one. Because we did we did one just the two of us. We went we did one where we went back to Idaho to see some of my old buddies I grew up with. Uh, we did one with our family, um, and I think I think that I think we just did those three this summer. As far as I can remember, there might be another one. Yeah, but... I only went camping once this summer, so I guess three is. It's you know that's three hundred times the amount that I've gone or something like that. Yeah, 30, but it's just, you know, know you, you, you try to get I try to go I try to go like once a month in the summer. I think that's kind of our goal. Um, mm. But but yeah, and there's always fall and winter camping, but I just I I don't really ever do that. Yeah, that sounds like it'd be cold. We yeah. went uh, last September camping up in New York, and it was very cold. <laughs> and oh, uh, yeah, yeah, wasn't prepared for that. But you know what I was prepared for this week? Your poll list uh yeah <laughs> and i was just trying to do do a full uh, a fun turn of phrase but here's the reality is i i was like looking forward to going to the comic shop i hadn't i've been i haven't been looking at like what's been coming out because i've just been enjoying going to the shop and just like being surprised um, oh yeah instead of like looking on a monday and being like oh cool this is coming out and then kind of just you know the next two days that or that excitement kind of petering out or whatever but uh yeah. yeah, so I've just been going and just being like, just show me what you got, baby. And uh, <laughs> and this week, he uh, the guy gave me Ant-Man out of my pool box. Normally, I get like two or three from my pools, and then I'll find like another two or three off the shelf, something like that. So he just yeah. gave me the one. I'm like, well, that's great. That means I get to like just go over to the over to the shelves and just kind of look around and see what's like striking my fancy and go from there. And, you know, maybe pick up some new number ones or whatever. But like. There was like 
so little that that like anything that I would have read would have just been like out of feeling obligation to like read something. But the reality yeah. is, is like I'm reading so many comics at the moment. I don't really want to start number ones unless they look like super interesting to me. So, yeah, I, no, uh, I get that. I every comic I got, I, I said I got two comics this week. Um, two? I, just two? Yeah, just two. Just two. Wow. Yeah, I know. I mean, I have, like that's not that's not a bad thing, to be honest. No, I mean, it's it's I it's I feel bad because I we do this podcast and I wish I could do more, but it's also like, I'd rather just like, just enjoy the stories that I'm, you know, invest in these stories that I think I'm really going to enjoy. But yeah. the first one that I want to talk about is, uh, well, I kind of already spoiled it by saying my guy handed it to me, but it is Ant-Man. And I took a page out of your book, Mark, and I got Ooh. myself not only the normal cover, but I got a variant cover as well. Mostly because oh, nice. I didn't buy any other comics oh my so gosh this is i believe that this is going to be the scott lang uh issue of this okay I, um because that's his outfit i'm pretty sure uh i feel like i'm wrong um yeah who knows i uh, know i uh yeah i'll oh no i oh, know okay so no this is the eric o'grady uh version yeah that's right okay because i'm opening it and i'm seeing we join eric o'grady yeah so this is um yeah, this would be his his one then. Okay. I don't actually don't know that much about that Ant Man, so I'm very excited to read that. But here's just a closer what? look at the yeah. cover. I don't know that much about that Ant Man either. No, so he was the irredeemable Ant Man, um, uh, which he was kind of just like a he was like the most selfish of the whole bunch and wasn't really a hero. Was just kind of trying to be a hero to impress people and he like would string down and spy on girls in the shower which is uh a That's sex a crime now yeah. <laughs> yeah um but unrelated to that here's this uh cover so this one has all four of the ant-mans if you're watching uh on yeah the yeah yeah you can see it sorry about the audio but yeah we have the new ant-man in the back we have scott lang eric o'grady and hank pym um yeah and man i just talking about this now i've like just remembering how much I love this character. So very excited to dive into this. This is a part of a series that's covering uh, the three Ant-Man, um, the original three Ant-Man, and then introducing a new one. So that's pretty dang exciting. And this, I honestly just picked up kind of out of the novelty of it, um, but it is the Amazing Fantasy issue 1000. Ooh. So this isn't the uh amazing spider-man issue 1000 this is the amazing fantasies but for some reason i believe that the amazing fantasies also counts all the amazing spider-mans as their issues for some reason um i'm not 100 percent sure on that but either way it had a thousand on it so i'm like i'm gonna do this and if you look on the back here there's like an endless list of people who are involved with this project um, yeah and i mean neil gaiman obviously jumps out at me uh, that looks Jonathan like that looks Hickman. like a, a thick guy. It was. It is a thick guy. So it actually has several stories on it. Let's see how many. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight stories. I would assume wow. that it would just. Uh, I mean, that's a dollar story. It was an eight dollar comic, so that's not bad at all. And they're all just, yeah, yeah, they're shorter. So I'm, honestly, I am really looking forward to this because I'd like being able to just read something that's pretty short and like sometimes like just one issue seems a little long you know and like yeah. at least with spider-man you're familiar with the lore enough you don't feel like you got to sit down and like these are probably all just rehashings of like famous uh you know i'm sure the clone saga is going to be in here and i saw one of the issues was titled with great power you know comes responsibility right. for whatever um yeah so um i'm trying to look for more names on here that i know that i would want to point out but there's yeah none that i'm of seeing but our, all the art and stuff looks great so those are the only two comics I got this week. Um, that has to be the lowest pool I've ever gotten on the podcast, and just probably like at least for the past year or so. Wow. Uh, and I'm a little disappointed in myself because I saw one of the ones that you're gonna get, not uh, not to spoil the Obi One issue, and that's I wanted to pick it up, but I was issue four, and I'm like, yeah, uh, I you might I'm as well wait for the just, trade paperback. Yeah. Yeah, mine as well. Like it's gonna be like sixteen bucks, and then I can like yeah. just get them all. And you'll you'll save actually, you'll save you'll save about two fifty. 
Yeah. Oh boy. Um, and uh, but I am <laughs> proud of my like Star Wars trade paperback collection because it's it's decent. Um, yeah. Probably better than any other anthology. Um, but yeah. Anyways, Mark, what was in your pull box? I feel like you would have gotten slightly more than me. I, I I I did. It was very very slightly more than you. Um, let me let me get back over here real quick. Uh, I got I got three in total. Three. That's one more than me. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah. So actual three comics. You already mentioned one, so I'll go ahead and start off with that. But it is Obi Wan issue four. Um. I've really been Sorry, enjoying this series. It. It's okay. Um. Spoilers happen. Sometimes you can't you can't avoid them. I try to. Uh, earnestly uh, avoid them, but it uh, it doesn't always it work out. Happens. Well, and it's just like, you know, uh, backstage we were talking about what's going on with the MCU right now, and it's just I hadn't watched episode two of She-Hulk yet. Um, I think, I, I can't remember, we ended up watching it like a few days later, which isn't normal for Kate and I, but like my son was watching it on his phone while we were driving, and he like <laughs> announced it, and I was like, and then like, my wife's really good about reminding him like i hate spoilers like yeah. they're, they're they're the opposite they'll read all the spoilers they can and find it out huh. um but like yeah he let something slip that happened in episode two but it wasn't something that like ruined it because it was i kind of like had already seen it coming anyway based on yeah. like the the preview but um but yeah they they happen sometimes and sometimes they're just right in front of your face and you can't look away. I mean, it, th that happens <laughs> to me all the time with like Twitter, or like um, uh, what's it called? I mean, sometimes I'll just get push notifications for, of a tweet that like has a spoiler in it. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. OK, cool. Um, I mean, that happens with uh, the Doctor Strange movie a whole bunch. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, back to uh, issue four of the. Yeah. Movie. So um, but yeah, I've just been enjoying this because it is like the Alec Guinness version of Obi-Wan, the older white beard, white hair, Obi-Wan um, kind of looking back and reflecting as he's writing like his story down in a journal, which, you know, we know that Luke got a hold of the journals uh, in the earlier comics that after Disney took over Marvel. Um, and so this is, it's kind of like, you know, it's just another page out of the book, essentially, of Star Wars and like making connections to different parts. And now we're seeing him write this journal and tell stories from his life as a Jedi. And I've really enjoyed this the series so far. And I, again, uh, always the Star Wars comics just seem to be doing it so much better for me, at least, than the shows and the movies of late. Uh, the books have been really good too, but the comics still just kind of take the cake. Um, so I sorry, mind if I cut you off. Real no, quick. you're good. Uh, the other day at work, somebody came up to me, one of my coworkers, and was like, so I hear you're a force user, too. And I'm just like it. The the absurdity of that statement, like caught me <laughs> off guard for a second. I'm just like, what? And he's like, you like Star Wars? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I love it. And the, what's so interesting about Star Wars and, and one thing that I think makes it a little bit better than the MCU is the fact that it spans so many different um, uh, medias. Yeah, like it has it has the movies, obviously, it has television shows, it has comics that are also connected to the universe, um, which I'm honestly surprised that the MCU hasn't done that. That doesn't make any sense to me why they wouldn't do that. But uh, yeah, yeah, not they, to go off on that rant. Yeah, they, they used to do the like the one shots and like that kind of stuff. But like, I I feel like they could do more with that. Anywho, um, but there's also like the uh, the video games and all that stuff. And I am not in the video game worlds at all. But there's like a whole deep lore in that that like, oh, yeah, I just don't know at all, you know, and the books. So it's just it's amazing the breadth of uh, my cats here, everybody who's watching and uh, <laughs> being a menace. But yeah, it's amazing the the breadth and you know, the width of Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, and we got we have some comics. Uh, Carl said, "What up, fam?" Oh, some comments. He was just Hi, tuning Carl. in about six minutes ago. And did either of us pick up Alex Ross's new uh, oh, Fantastic, five, Fantastic Four, Four book. book? I I I did not. Uh, you know, let me. You know, let me let let me finish up my uh, my poll list. Yeah. And Carl, I'm glad you also hate. 
Um, you also hate hate spoilers because they suck. They're the worst. Right. Um, so, uh, so my other one, this is kind of on what you're talking about with the what, the, the Spider Man you got. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is this is Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood. It's three short stories. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been enjoying it. Uh, the and I haven't been keeping up with it. I'm I've only read the first story of the third issue, but I like coming back to these ones when I can because they are just like short, mm-hmm. um, and you can you can just knock out one of the three stories pretty quickly. Um, and then lastly, oh, uh, apologies, I, I I meant to get into the creators, um, yeah. Obi Wan creators. Uh, the writer is Christopher Cantwell. The artist is Matabek Mustabakov. And the colorist is Sebastian Chang. Nice. Yeah. And then for Moon Knight, there's uh, actually Cantwell uh, did this as well. Look um, at that. So just raking could, in that Marvel cash, bringing in that <laughs> that Marvel cash. Um, yeah. So we got Cantwell on there as well with uh, let's see who was the artist for lens so alex lens and then we also have uh, another writer nadia shamas with uh dante bastinoni as the artist and then we have a a writer and a a writer artist in uh paul as as a as a sita as a sita do you think those guys get like double like i wonder what the deal looks like if you're your own artist as well you know like if you're pushing a comic like how much you're selling it to or like yeah the cut you get i wonder if you get double the i would i hope so but yeah i don't know i don't know how that works so i'm gonna i'm gonna just stop i mean you're doing you're doing the you're doing the work of more than one person so you would hopefully get more but i don't know that's why that's why we need to start reaching out to some creators as well and see if we can start yeah that would be a a good thing to ask somebody who's that'd be a good something thing to ask somebody who actually has made a comic yeah um and then lastly i got the final issue i think it's the final issue um it's issue five at least of west of sundown okay um so as far as i know that that was it for that series let me let me double check that um you sound you you started so strong on this series i did it's I still appreciate it for like what it's doing artistically. Um, Mm -hmm. And the story, the story just has gotten less gripping as it's gone on, but I don't, I don't like necessarily hate it. There is going to be one more issue. So there's six issues in total. Okay. Um, Which I'm glad because right. Yeah. Vault put this out and I'm kind of, I'm glad that there's six now that I, cause I read this one last night when I got home. Cause uh, like, like I'd said, I hadn't, I hadn't read a comic in almost two weeks. Um, oh until until last night um and uh this is one of the ones that i read because i just got a huge stack from my shop of what was in my my box for me and um i knew i knew i needed to get something read before we <laughs> went live today um but yeah no like so i do enjoy the story and i just like its play on mm-hmm. uh classical characters and mixing them into the western setting um and now i'm glad that there's a sixth issue as the finale because i thought that this one ended the series really well which now that Mm. i know it's not the series finale it uh makes a little more sense um and then this is uh the team of uh tim seeley and aaron campbell and uh sorry it doesn't have all this yeah and then uh the art another artist is uh jim terry and it was colored by pharrell and lettered by crank and crank is with the exclamation point right uh so it's really exciting when he does the lettering always yeah we've we've seen him on a couple things right yeah he's uh man let me for some reason he's he's not listed in the creators again on league of comics but yeah he's good old league of comics it, his his name's hard to escape when the the letter gets to have their name on the cover because it's just it's right there and it's it's uh, exclaimed. Yeah, it's very good branding. Um, but yeah, so that's all I got this week. I had a lot more last week. Um, but, yeah, I got a decent one last week, but we're not yeah. talking about those. Maybe we'll talk about some of the comics we read from it. But uh, I'm going yeah. to I want to dive into Slumber Number Six. So this is. Um, this is the end of this first volume. 
And for those of you who don't know, it's from Image Comics. The team is, uh, let me open her up and find the title page. It is Tyler Burton Smith. Vanessa Carlson is the illustrator. Uh, Simon Robbins is the colorist. And the letter and designer is Steve Wands. Um, and I have been a big fan of this series. Like, I, I have no problems with it, but I'm also like, it wasn't like the greatest, like, I didn't meet god reading it you know but yeah. it was it was enjoyable it's stayed consistent through the whole thing uh the story is that there's this woman whose name is stenson uh she is a dream hunter and what she does is people pay her to go into uh their nightmares and to kill um the the thing to kill the uh whatever it is that's bothering them um and the, the antagonist the antagonist <laughs> you know, essentially yeah well so but then we we find out that there is like a a big bad like there's a a creature oh, so, behind okay. a lot of this stuff i haven't even gotten to like the other so this is this is like a, a mini boss so i haven't even gotten to like the real what the story is because that's just what this lady does but there's somebody that's possessing bodies in their in people's dream states and using them to commit murders so she teams up with a police officer who uh, gets possessed and kills somebody. Um, who puts that out? Uh, image. Image. Okay. Yeah. And so it's an ongoing series. So it's this ends um, with some setting up like a future story because uh, all the kind of main characters are in different spots. Um, yeah. So uh, I really don't have much to say about this comic because, like I said, it's just been it hasn't been bad it's just been just very like oh that was cool that was enjoyable like i'm just gonna kind of i'll probably forget about it you know and i don't mean that in a bad way there's just a lot of comics you know yeah no there 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 are um and uh yeah speaking of something that has a lot of comics so can i dive into one i got yeah, right go here ahead. oh let me just uh, say the uh trade paperback is out for that next month so if you want to pick that up anybody it's image the for, first ones are usually pretty cheap i heard it's you know usually ten dollars but sometimes i pick up first volumes maybe it's reprints of first volumes that the price goes up but sometimes i do see maybe. volume ones of images that are like 15 14 yeah no that or that's that's kind of how they get you like on the trade paperbacks is they'll they'll do the first volume for about 10 12 bucks but then like if you're waiting for volume two three etc like they they always go up to a higher price of being like 18 to like 24 dollars yeah so oh. um good on you image but but it's that again that's just that's just that's just the good way for them to do it that's how they make they make some of that that sweet cheddar sweet cheddar um, and I was also going to say too the the premise that you said of slumber. So that's is the person is going into people's dreams and using those people to murder people in reality. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So that that seems very okay, so, similar. To, well, so go there's on, go somebody. It, there's a entity within the dreams that is possessing people, not this lady going into the dreams. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So the lady, the entity w is revealed later that it is connected back to the lady um but it is yeah it's not her uh, okay it's yeah it's it's, it's i don't want to say yeah i can't go any farther into it without <laughs> yeah spoiling, no, no but there's worries. like a there's a spooky shadow person that uh is essentially the antagonist oh yeah well i i might i might have to watch for that uh yeah that trade paperback um yeah it kind of reminded me of uh there's something wrong with patrick todd a little bit in the sense of like he he gets people to do things through some psych psychology power that he has yeah like a hypnotist um, thing or like, something like that yeah well it's just like i just remember in the first issue is it just yeah the the guy that was being used to rob the bank was just like yeah i'm fully aware of what's going on and this isn't normally who i am i don't normally like rob banks and blah 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 yeah um and yeah, I think even when he's turning himself into the police and then admitting to the the actual crime that he hasn't been caught for, uh, he's just like, yeah, like I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't like come turn myself in. Like obviously, like I'm <laughs> admitting a crime to you that you haven't even been investigating me for. So, right, um, yeah. but yeah, just the whole concept of like taking over people's minds in some way and doing it through dreams. Like there's an entity that uses your dreams to work its 
it's bidding. That's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, cool. But yeah, so again, something that there's a lot of, because there's a lot of comics and some, some comics have more comics than others. And I'm getting into star Wars. There's a lot of star Wars comics. Um, and this Arts is the, the new star one. Wars? Yeah. Who knew? Uh, so this is the first one put out by a dark horse since dark horse uh, kind of took back over the reins of the indie side of star Wars comics. I, because um, IDW was doing it. I don't know if they are anymore. Um, uh, it's been a while since I've seen something from them. Because like the last the last thing I saw of Star Wars from IDW is a higher public, I believe, that came out earlier in the summer and then it ended its arc. And I think it's on a, a break or yeah. just maybe it is all moving a dark horse. I need to look into that a little bit more. If anybody knows, let me know. Um, but I don't think that these are sequential, uh, like a sequential series. Um, Hmm. This story, but it this one definitely left off with. Uh, sorry, I did read this one, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Sure. Um, it did leave off with like a cliffhanger um, because a new character is introduced in this one. Uh, it's of uh, the Wookiee, uh, the family, and uh, actually, there's two characters, and uh, I, you know, I, I I won't spoil too much by saying this, but obviously one of these two characters dies because they're they're related. Um, but it kind of left off with like what what this person was trying to protect. Mm -hmm. And but but I don't think I don't think that the next issue is going to be the same story because it is hyperspace stories, which makes okay. it seem like it's more of an anthology. Yeah. Um, I really I really enjoyed it, um, mostly because it is Dark Horse and Dark Horse just had a certain hold on Star Wars comics back in the day, just even the way the art is done. It, it just makes it seem so much more of like uh, playing with an animated series in a way, um, mm. just visually. Uh, yeah. So I, I really enjoyed it. There was a couple of parts in it too, though, that uh, it felt like it kind of skipped around. Like uh, there could have been another frame in there to explain what happened between, you know, frame one and frame two. They, there could have been a frame one A or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it didn't it didn't like take away from the story overall. So I really enjoyed it. I'm excited for what what is to come from Star Wars uh, through Dark Horse. I know they have another one coming out in a couple months. That's so is not... that is it how connected to it is it like the Star Wars canon then? Uh, as far as I know, it is canon. Okay. Um, wow. And so these but these are just little like one off stories uh, that I think IDW kind of did that with the uh, Star Wars Adventures. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't always necessarily like, at least the arcs weren't always connected. I don't think. Um, yeah. Like it sequentially, but but yeah. So this was written by Amanda uh, Daybert, and the artist is Lucas Marengon, and the cover artist was Miguel Valderrama. So, nice. yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'll keep. I'll keep my eye on it as I do with all the other Star Wars. Good old Mark and his Star Wars. Oh yeah. my goodness. Um, here's something that's not Star Wars. Uh, but yeah, I, so I've, this is a, like a little dive in my personal life. Uh, and this doesn't have anything to do with the comics I was about to say, but I was just thinking about <laughs> Star Wars. Um, I've, my, uh, breaks at lunch have changed. So I, how I do them is different. And, uh, I've, started bringing my i uh my fire tablet to just do stuff on it and what i'm planning to do is start reading comics there every once in a while um so yeah i'm really looking forward i'd love for those of you who are familiar with the podcast know that i love just going to star wars to just binge read it um but yeah, yeah so that's kind of just what i want to do is just um yeah just start diving into a lot of this stuff because there's just so many and it's usually very good yeah but uh speaking of something that's usually very good and just has been very good i mentioned that i picked these up last week just kind of on a whim um since i knew the artist but this is above snakes one and two. Oh yeah uh, how yeah. how is it well i'm glad you asked buddy it's <laughs> it's very good i'll say that the so okay so the the story is that we're following this gentleman here whose name i uh not coming to the, me off the top of my head but uh it's 
I guess, yeah, this guy also does the art for um, uh, Do a Power Bomb, which is something that I've been uh, reading. Uh, so before I it, I'm going to that, I just want to say, did I say the names who wrote it? It's Sean Lewis and uh, Hayden Sherman and also Haddison Otsmain El Lau. Um, and they've been a team on some other things. They did Thumbs, which I do believe Carl, who is, uh, was commenting in here earlier that he has read that from based on a comic that he put uh, up on my Instagram. Okay. Um, I mentioned that I was really, and this is the truth. I was just really digging uh, the art in this. And so I wanted to go out and find more from Mr. Sherman. And then, so I bought Mary Shelley's monster hunter, the first trade paperback. Um, and yeah, it was a little, Wait, so like, can you, can you hold that up again? Yeah, sure. So this is a story about uh, the, I guess, the true origins of the Frankenstein story. Uh, ah, essentially. And I'm so intrigued. It, yeah, so it follows Mary Shelley, um, who I believe is the author of Frankenstein. That is correct, um, yes. Yeah, and it's essentially, it talks about how, uh, and I don't know how true this is, but how there's a missing time in her life where they didn't know what she did. And then it was after that, that uh, she wrote Frankenstein. So this is kind of the in between they find a diary and it's, this is the story within the diary. Um, yeah. So I haven't gotten all the way through that. If you'd notice, I have a little marker up here that is a uh, sour patch kids thing, which is probably shouldn't be putting in a comic, but Oh, well, wait, this, wait, 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 wait. It's like a Sour Patch Kid, like actual like gummy, like you're no. using a, a, a no. It's a, it's a that would be that would be the worst thing ever to just like gloop apart the things. No, it's just well, the, I, I know I know some I know some people who like to uh, stick their nose into a book for educational purposes, like going to college. They will treat themselves like every five pages, like a skill oh, or right. something. Like people people use yeah. that as like a a trick to get themselves to study. It never worked on me, so yeah, I can you just can, eat yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a bad idea to put candy in between the pages of your comic books. Just, yeah, so, everybody knows. <laughs> just so everybody knows that's what we're here for to, to make a public servants announcement. But so above snakes, it's about this uh, gunman whose wife got uh, murdered, who, uh, you know, the whole normal, traditional, like Western outlaw thing by uh, this gang. And the gang is called above snakes. So it looks like he's going around from uh town to town kind of dealing with people who have been wronged by the above snakes gang and he has a like vulture that's with him so there's kind of like a supernatural element to it because it's a not a, a live vulture it's a skeleton of a vulture let's see if i can find um uh find that for you but yeah so part of the reason that he kills is so he can feed this vulture so I guess it's not really a skeleton, but it like is definitely drawn funny. It's it's oh, yeah. like yellow and it always remains yellow. But um, yeah, it's the, like, the, the art style the is very befitting of uh, a Western. Yeah. And I think that's why, like, I just just got really into not only this story, but just his art in general. I just wanted to see what else he could do with it. But yeah, I, it is really fitting for that. And I mean, we both re really enjoy chicken devil. So that'll be coming back and then um, yeah. do a power bomb. I've been really enjoying. And honestly, a big part of it is just seeing this art um, because it's just so not standard and it's, it's not a, it's, it seems like it's not afraid to be what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't make people look perfect. Like it's not asymmetrical necessarily, but like it still is just a beautiful expression of art. Well, and so, then another person that's connected to a bunch of the comics that you just mentioned, like this one you're talking about above snakes, mm -hmm. as well as uh, chicken devil you mentioned is the letter is somebody I've talked about before, um, whose name like his name always pops out to me when I see him. And if I see his comic in the shop, and it's not on my list, I, I'll usually grab it. Mm. I don't I just Hassan. I want to be Yeah, Hassan. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, his, his name's always popped out to me as a, as, as a letter really since we started doing this podcast. And so 
uh, it's always cool for me to see his name because he's one letter that I'm like kind of following. The yeah, other would be the other we mentioned earlier is Crank. Crank. Um, yeah. So. yeah, no, he does a phenomenal job. There's even like, I mean, just looking at this like opening page here, um, you can see like there's different types of lettering, like just you know, like oh yeah, people yelling and then um, talking, and then this is this is being told from the perspective of a medicine man kind of thing he like goes to, from town to town he's like a snake oil salesman it feels like almost <laughs> okay um, above so, snakes above yeah. snake oil snake oils um yeah. but yeah so he keeps all of his stories in like these vessels so it's an interesting inter interesting premise but okay. so it's just been it's a very just weird uh story and he does the letter yeah going back to the lettering it's just it's it's phenomenal how he's been using it. So just overall, if you feel like reading a good comic that has good art, good stories, like and really good, good lettering, um, from, good lettering from from uh, the description of your comic that you're holding in your hand, it says rock star letterer. Nice, which he I is. Like, yeah, a hundred percent. So, um, but yeah, but that's that's that one for me, buddy. What do you got? Uh, I'll I'm gonna pull out another one that. Uh, you know, we've I think we've both read at least the first two. I don't know if you read the third one, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. New Think issue three. So that cover looks really good. Was the it, story good? Um, I don't really know what the cover has to do with the story. And the story is. Uh, it's. I'll put it to you this way, this this it kind of. I hate I hate to do this, Carl, because we just talked about hating spoilers. So I'm trying to make this spoiler free. But the story is told from the perspective of your phone. Interesting. And I don't I don't I don't think that that's going to ruin anything knowing that. Um, yeah. But it was just it was a very busy issue. OK, which I mean, when you think about everything your phone does for you in your life, um, it's yeah. a pretty busy device. I mean, you can run apps on it in the background for, you know, drain your battery, whatever. Um, but like, it just, it does do a lot. And so it's just like this issue seems to be being told from if your phone had its own personification, mm. this is the story it would talk about and like what its desire essentially is. Um, See, I don't understand. It wasn't. That... It wasn't my favorite of the the three that have been released. So, okay, which one is your favorite? The first one. Yeah, the first one was really good. The second one was. You and I deferred on that one. I remember. You, I didn't enjoy it to the point that I jumped it. off. You and then you. I think you even said in the episode in which I hadn't read it yet because you got it and you read it and mine hadn't come in yet. Um you 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 assume that we were going to have opposing views um mm. and i'm trying to remember what was the the story of that one was like it was more of like a fairy tale yeah it was like told setting. as if it was like a bedtime tale kind of thing about this village that ha just tells stories or some shit and then yeah. uh there's sorry. the storyteller like, yeah yeah it, and i think i really appreciate I, I think you and I, I can't remember if this was on the podcast or not, but we talked about it and you were talking about the importance of telling stories and yeah. what they mean and all those things. And I, I really appreciated it from that perspective. I just yeah. feel like the execution of it could have been better. I, yeah. I felt like the comic was kind of talking down to me a little bit, but I don't know. I think that just was me reading into it <laughs> of just being like, I think uh, it was could, just told in be. such of like a fairy tale kind of way of just like, this is the village of the storytellers and that's where they tell stories. And yeah. I actually, yeah, I, I actually wasn't. have that issue right here next to me. Um, I think I was just more confused as to what this anthology series is about, because now we're back on phones and like the art covering for that looks so much different than the art that was in issue number two. So it was just kind of like, what is this? What is this like? Yeah. story i can't like the silver coin we're reading is obviously it's a little bit different because it follows a coin but there's still like it's a horror thing and it's like it's about the essentially like the worst aspects of humans being brought out and then like used to for their own demise is kind of the the theme yeah. through that but i don't understand like is it just like things we need for mo like 
living modern times like i don't i don't know i just don't yeah. understand what it's try what it's like end goal is yeah no that like that's what you're saying about new think like you you can mm -hmm. see kind of the end goal with silver coin for sure it is it it is a special type of a um anthology series too but yeah new think it there's there's no there's the only connection between them is that it's just like trying to do what black mirror does to you in getting you to think from a different perspective um around a certain a certain topic at hand some issue yeah. at hand uh that's that's common in society and so i don't know and i do remember too before the first issue came out and we read it we were both iffy on that it described itself as like something like black mirror yeah um so it was just yeah i don't know i don't know if it's paying off i'm not hating the series i i like i like what they're doing but yeah it's just it's not it's not delivering at, at its at its fullest i don't think and so hopefully the next couple issues will rise up yeah rise up yeah. from the ashes rise um up from the ashes like a phoenix there you go uh do you have anything else <laughs> you want to say about it um let me let me let me just look here real quick. I have its page up. Oh, did, uh, you, did you say who the creators were? Well, it's yeah. So they're all they're all by uh, Greg Hurwitz. Um, oh, right. I don't. Art, I think I team. think the artist changes actually since I have both of them here. Yeah, yeah might as so well because like, the first one was Mike to uh, to Dato Junior. That's, that's right. Like yeah, part of the reason I was excited for it. Yeah. So um, this one was uh, you know is written by Hurwitz. So this is actually the opposite too. Speaking of silver coin uh walsh does all the art for silver coin but he's the main right. guy behind it and all the mm -hmm. stories are commissioned out to different writers and so in this one greg hurwitz is the writer but he's commissioning out different artists right. uh, and so the artist for this one was uh, karen grant um i don't know i'm not familiar with the name no i, um, I kind of am but i think i'm just thinking of grant which is a pretty common last name yeah um yeah so but yeah uh it would it, again i guess it, this would be something for me against the artists is the the art is something that kind of made it really difficult for me to enjoy this issue of new think is because it was a very busy mm -hmm. one because and it, again like it does make sense it like the busyness does make sense because of what i mentioned and that like this is being told from the perspective of your phone Mm -hmm. and your phone is a very busy device so i don't know maybe i need yeah. to give it another shot i'll give it another read there you we'll, go we'll see um, um you got I'm another just, one you want to talk about or you got well, you got quickly uh, we were just talking about the silver coin um i i don't even did i mention to you that chip zadarsky made he wrote number one yeah i realized that the other week okay yeah because we've been talking about him just a little bit because i've been reading or we've both been reading the batman and just kind of been getting on him um yeah but speaking of him, uh, I, I mentioned this comic a while back, but it is public domain. Oh, yes. Um, it is about a comic book creator who uh, discovers that he still has the rights to a comic book character that is um, blown up and is, has a bunch of movies and spinoffs and, you know, merchandise that he's not getting money for and all of those things. Um, and I I picked up issue number three last week and haven't gotten to it but i read number one or number issue number two uh recently and it's still going like it's still good i feel like it's going to continue to be good um i i trust chip zadarsky like so much so i'd imagine that yeah. like everything that's gonna he does the art and um i know i've said this at the time that i was first talking about it but it seems like it's like the new like I don't want to like compare him to that, but it's like what Jack Kirby kind of set for like, this is how you do comic books mm -hmm. for that age. This is like Chip Zdarsky's art seems very like, because it's very simple and it's very modern. Um, okay. And I don't mean either of those things poorly. Um, but yeah, I, I think it is, it's great. It really fits the world that he's, he's telling the story in. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I really don't have anything more to say about it, but I just it's something that I really I I was thinking about this the other day when I was I was driving somewhere and I was like, I really want to read more comics that aren't like so action focused because I feel like everything that I read is either like a superhero or like 
um, yeah. somebody like a spy or something like that, you know, like, yeah. um, or PI or something, but like, I'd like to just read a comic book that's very focused on like just average people doing average people stuff. Okay. Um, well, I think I got, I, well, we, we're, yeah, I think I got something. I think I got right. something here. Um, I brought this one up a few weeks ago when I got it in my poll list. It's an issue number one from AWA. It's an upshot. Um, nice. And I had, I, told, I said I was a little scared to read it, and uh, it wasn't. It, it's it's just got a very scary cover. Um, now that you're sac- saying, I remember it's the person sacrament. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Upside so there's down, a person crucified. that's crucified yep. upside down, which that does uh, play in. Like they they do talk about Saint Peter a little bit. Um, oh wow! But, Good on them. But the I didn't really know what I was getting into when I picked this up, and this mm. is like, okay, we've already moved on from Earth. Like that's where this is picking up. I think it's I think it's the year twenty nine ninety nine. Okay. And religion, for the most part, has been completely done away with, but there's still like a remnant of it. Mm. And the main character of this is still like, you know, a a bishop or something like whatever is left of the Catholic Church. Like mm-hmm. has the white collar, all that. But this is also a person who. You know, this is this, it's a pretty common d- display of Catholic priests, and that like they they are wrestling with their relationship with God and struggling to believe. And so we have like yeah. one of these He's these smoking. characters, um, but we're also like in an age where everything's already been explained by science. Mm-hmm. Um, but then at the end of the issue, what's on the cover is this guy. Um, I can't remember what the character's significance was, but he wasn't like in it until he was found floating upside down in the air looking like he's on a crucifix Mm. um and then the main character there's a backstory to him in that he's been a part of one one exorcism that did not go well and his like partner died like his Mm. priest partner um and now there's a new case coming up where like the rest of the world is well it's this guy hanging upside down like what's going on um and so they have to bring him in because he's the only person um who's experienced something like this but at the same time like everything he's doing is illegal because if you run a religion you it's a it's like against like whatever the empire is here um Mm -hmm. and so like whenever a priest comes to do like a sermon or a sacrament or whatever uh they have to do it in secret and there's all these like oldest like escape routes that they've always known about that they're able to like get away in so it's pretty exciting and I'm I'm very much looking forward to issue two. That sounds pretty it sounds it seems like suspenseful. It um, is. Yeah. I don't know why, but I feel like it's it takes place on a spaceship, right? Or For the like, most part. It's like they there's other planets that have been discovered that humans have uh you know, colonized. so this is this is essentially like a millennium later right. um from from today. Um and uh yeah, so like different planets have been like inhabited by humans. Um, not necessarily. I don't really recall there being any other like species of uh, sentient beings, but uh, right. Okay, can I just have like? I feel like the idea of it being on a spaceship would add kind of to like the suspense of it all. You know? Yeah, and like, it and it does. Like a lot of it does take place on like he has his own spaceship that he travels around in, and there was there was the cool. space chase and space <laughs> chase. Yeah, space so. chase. You say, huh? Well, I might have to dive in for Space Chase. Um, Surprised that's not a movie series. Yeah. Well, we'll make it. The Space (laughs) Chase. uh, The Pool Box Pals brings you a Space Chase. Uh, But something that I don't have a good segue for is this comic right here. I told you to remind me to read this comic or uh, to talk about it. And in all honesty, like I kept seeing, like I kept completely forgetting about this comic. And then I would see it like in my pool. Uh, to my read my to read pile and I'd be like oh yeah I really want to read that and then I would just forget about it instantly but I'm glad that I did end up reading it is end after end the uh, team on it is there's two writers there's Andrew uh, sorry about that David Andre and Tim Daniels um, the artist is Sun and Dando C uh, the colorist is Kurt Michaels Russell and the letter is Jim Campbell. Um, and the art is, is really great. Um, that was mostly what I do is like, if a cover interests me, I will just open it. And I'm like, if 
and and then it, I'm just sold or not sold on the art. Yeah, I'm like, you're gonna have to look at this thing. If you don't like your instant reaction to what you see, then it's gonna that's gonna it's gonna come back to hurt you. But um, here's a really a great page to kind of look at is that you can see kind of the scope of this thing. Keep talking. I'm gonna go off screen real quick. Sure, no problem. But the story of this is that this character here, and I don't even know if we've gotten to know his name yet. Um, is this this gentleman right here for those of you who are watching? I'm trying to get it on screen. Well, there we go. Um, and he falls in front of a bus and goes to the afterlife, except it's not the afterlife. It is a purgatory kind of state. And so I showed you a picture earlier that it was like a big battlefield. Apparently there is this like ongoing war in the realms between the, this life and the next life. And when you pass away in this life, you go into the next one uh, fighting this you're participating in this war um, and you can die in that world. And then you go on to the other one. Do you hear everything? I, I heard saying? everything. Yeah. 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 I feel like this would be really like right up your alley because I know you, you like uh, Norse mythology and they're kind of big into like battling yeah. and Valhalla and that kind of stuff. And one of the guys that's in it is like a Viking X, X care, a Viking S character. Um, so yeah, I, this seems like, really interesting i don't even remember if i said the name but it was end after end yeah um, you, 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 you did and i was actually just about to ask you what it was again because i'm trying yeah to look it up. and it's from vault and i've so i was i'm also reading new thing uh, not new think um, um uh oh my god what's that comic called i think i have it on the wall hold on from vault yeah um blink no it's not blink Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm blank on it. But it's by the guy who wrote um, Join the Future. And he also did The Outbreakers from Vault. And I think you might have picked up the first volume that the first the cover is like a like a big red thing and it has like six faces on it. Um oh it's the it was like the outbreakers or something. I can't remember what it was called. Anyways, um yeah, there's just been a lot. I've said all this to just say that there's been a lot of good stuff coming from Vault. So I've yeah. been trying not to sleep on them and pick up stuff from them more often than I think I normally would. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that comic. Uh, <laughs> what's and, and, after, and after end and after end. But yeah, I, I think that's a great premise. I'm I'm very interested to see where this goes. But what's this gun horse thing? I've gun. been waiting for you to talk about is that what it's called or what was it? I gun. forget. It's, it's in the yeah. So title. let me let me do a little background. Um, sure. I uh, my my the the lady who runs like she manages the comic book shop. Um, she recommended the the first arc of this series to me, and actually, um, I think that they're just because this is this is issue one of the next arc and it's called issue one but it's called gun honey blood for blood um and uh oh there is a neat not gun horse yeah not gun horse gun gun <laughs> honey um and oh, it is a very <laughs> it's a it's it's a it's a hard case crime story put out by titan comics and this is something that they I think Titan comics has been like really working on, uh, as something mm. like part of their niche. Um, and gun honey, I read in the back of the issue that I got after I finished reading it, the, the first part of it that came out, I'm actually trying to bring that up real quick. And I think I have the trade paper back on digital. Um, mm. yeah. So yeah, gun honey. And then this is gun honey, blood for blood. So gun honey came out last year. Um, and it, it was their top selling comic. Um, and like, kind of, I think it kind of like blew whatever ha held that record out of the water. Um, mm. so yeah, so my comic book shop, uh, recommended gun honey to me. Um, and it is like a pulp noir and, uh, this is the issue that I got number one, it's called blood for blood. And I'm not entirely certain what the cover had to do with the story yet, other than, uh, the, the main character is, um, she was kind of raised by like a spy family in mm. a sense. Um, 
and she's just like really good with a gun. Um, and I think her, I, I don't even think her nickname is gun honey. Her name's Joanna Tan and she, okay, here it is. She's enlisted by the U S government. Um, and she has to like in the first series, she just has to find this man that she set loose and bring him down. Like it's just another, like, I think he was a serial killer. Um, mm -hmm. and he was connected to the deaths of her. I think this is the same story. I think it was connected to the death of her father and brothers. Okay. Um, I gotta remember it's been a while since I read that, but yeah. So then they announced that they were going to do blood for blood. Um, and I really liked it. It is just, you, you like nor, um, mm -hmm. comics. Uh, what's the one that you've been reading the fourth man? Well, yeah, I mean, that's done, but that it's was a done, phenomenal but like, one. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, we've read so many things by Ed Brubaker and all of his shit is basically noirs. Um, yeah. So yeah, those, that's all, that's all good. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, here's, here, here's something that Stephen King had to say about this series too. He says, wow. heart, uh, it's a hard case crime presents good, clean, bare knuckled storytelling. This is an exciting line of books. Like if, if Stephen King has something nice to say about what you've written, <laughs> I can't believe he reads comics. That's pretty dope. Well, a lot of his stories get turned into comics yeah. and they're in, um, like, cause I have, I have some of his, uh, the stand issues. Um, okay. I try, I tried to collect them all at one point. I tried to get like the hardback, um, uh, trade paperbacks, but, uh, or the hardcover ones, but they're just, they're so hard to get. Cause there was so many, there was just like a limited amount that came out when they were released. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I have, I can't remember if there's six, five, there's like five or six, uh, volumes for the stands. And I think I have three of them. Gotcha. So, um, but yeah, so he, he does have comics out there and he reads comics mm. and all that, but, um, but yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's a good, like deep noir series and it's exciting. Um, and I, yeah, I would definitely also recommend it an extension from my the, the lady who runs the comic book shop I go to. So. Nice. You have to let, let her know that you let millions of people know online. That, yes, mil millions. <laughs> um, uh, about that. So uh, we're, we're wrapping, we're getting in to, close to the end here. Just kind of want to give out a quick shout out to uh, I Hate This Place. I read that recently. Um, that's still very good. This is issue number five. So, or no, issue number four. So, we're getting close to the end of the arc. Um, they're definitely wrapping up. I would love to, be, I can't remember if it's an ongoing or not, but if it is, um, that'd be great. If not, that that's also fine. And yeah. uh, I also, just a quick little thing about, I read this uh, True Cult uh, comic. Oh yeah, how was that? Um, uh, fine. Fine. It, like the art was really good. The story, um, I don't know. I, I feel like the story is about to get interesting, but it didn't set up the world to make it believable for the things that might happen, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, and uh, the story of it was kind of spoiled for me by my, I think I might have told you this, by my guy at my comic shop. Um, so it was a little bit of a bummer to read through it and just be like, oh, I kind of know what's going to happen here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to definitely going to read issue two whenever that comes out. But if it does, if issue number two doesn't do it for me, then I'm going to just be like, well, you got my eight bucks. Yeah. You're fine. I'm fine. You know? Yeah. Uh, no, so how that. about you? Any, well, any quick little uh, shout outs you want to do before we wrap this bad boy up? No. Cause uh, I, I think I talked about everything that I've read over the last couple of weeks. Um, nice. I'm trying to think, I mean, I do have my, my pile of, ones that I still need to file away. Like I, I read Blood St. Teeth recently, the latest issue of that. I really enjoyed yeah, that. I think, I, think you um, I can't remember. Oh, I know. One I'm very excited about. Let me real quick. Sure. Let me get back. Let me get back to it. it's like page. So I have the information right in front of you me. You got this. Um, so there's a new comic out by or from Dark Horse. It came out last week, I believe. Yeah, the 24th. Um, I really, really like the cover because at first you're going to think like, oh, this is definitely like a Marvel like 
comic and it's a classic take on it. Um, mm -hmm. But but the writer of it is what I was most excited about. It's it's Patton Oswalt. Nice. Um, oh, OK. Yeah, I saw that he had done something recently, but I can't yeah. remember what it was. So he has this comic out now called Minor Threats. But like, okay. do you see what I mean about like the play on there's the characters up in the top corner like. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, that's a throwback. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and on the front here, you got a artist. quote. You got a quote from Taika Waititi on the front of this. He says, I didn't know he read, read comics. It's even less. I, I know who knew who knew that Taika read comics. I mean, he's, right. He's, he's only done a couple a couple things with Marvel. <laughs> a couple. But yeah, he said he had soaked from the first page. Minor threats is delicious, villainous, dark pop. At last, something cool in a world where nothing is cool. Nice. I don't. What does he even mean by that? I don't um, know. I think I think he's spiraling. But yeah, so I'm. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, no, I'm excited to hop into that one. That might be one I read next, actually. Awesome. Um, also, I just wanted to get back to uh, Carl. Thanks for chatting with us, man. Uh, we kind of kind of touched on everything you said, except for the last thing. Um, yeah, about the yeah. spoilers. Oh, yes, yeah, the, the the Civil War having. <laughs> Spider-Man holding cap shield as the thumbnail for so yeah no yeah well yeah I mean that thing I thank God I, that was at a time when with Marvel that where like I would stop everything I was doing and like watch a trailer sometimes mostly now I just wait till I get home so I can like watch it on my TV and get like the full experience of it and rather than like just what I don't know it depends on where I'm at and what I'm doing but yeah uh, I'm happy that I existed in a time where uh, that wasn't instantly spoiled for me because uh yeah, I would have been very upset, just like good old Carl. Um, oh, but Carl. yeah, Carl, if if you have any suggestions on comics that you think we should be reading, you want to check it out. Uh, I know you mentioned the new Fantastic Four. I was on the Fantastic Four for a while, uh, but just jumped off because uh, story just felt like it wasn't going very much anywhere. But now that there's a new writer, um, might have to jump back in on that. But uh yeah, I think I think this bird is ready to land. It is. It's ready to get back in its nest and curl up for the night. For is that do okay. birds sleep in a nest like all night? That's a I dumb question. I would assume so. I always just kind of assume that nests are just for eggs, not for like actually. Yeah, but I guess they would just go back there and chill, huh? Yeah, but I, I think the purpose of the nest though is that they do. It is for laying their eggs, and I don't know. I'm not a bird person, so I'm not a birdologist. Yeah. Um, but on that note, this <laughs> this bird is running back into its nest to do something. That who knows what it does. If gotta you know, read, read it's gonna comic. read a comic. Yeah, read a comic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually. I might while I'm waiting for this up episode to the audio of it. If while I'm waiting for the audio to upload, I might read some comics while I'm sitting here. But uh, friends, if you uh, are enjoying this, make sure that you like this and share it around. If you haven't followed us on Facebook or Twitter or um, instagram or youtube or twitch we're on all of those things we're also on right. um all tiktok we all need to start getting back on our tiktoks but uh, we will and it's it's just you know like we talked about this backstage but like summer's just been a little bit difficult it's not as scheduled of a time and yeah uh, i'm i'm honestly amazed that we didn't actually just like say hey let's just take the summer off but i mean we only started i think yeah. a little before summer started so right. um but work. But yeah, but yeah. No, it's 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 I'm 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 glad we do this and uh and again uh thank you to IWEP network up next at what seven o'clock eastern 730 time and seven thirty eastern, eastern yeah. time is tornado tag. Yeah, so if you want to go to the tornado tag Facebook page, you can watch that. It's a uh a podcast about wrestling and it's mostly just local wrestling to like this area, but they have fun conversations, so might as well just go over there and join in on that if that's something that uh, you're inclined to. Yeah. Um, but, friends, thank you so much for hanging out. It's been another great episode. Uh, yeah. Mark, we need a, a sign-off. Didn't we try? Oh, yeah. It was see you next pool time. Same. No. Yeah, it, was, like it was along those lines. But, uh, yeah. you know. I we'll... feel like every comic book thing probably uses that. Did Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I was trying to think if the X Men animated series did anything, and all I can think is so you say bye, and then I'll sing that out. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye.